Okay, um, so thank you for coming back, most of you. <laughs> uh, first talk of the afternoon is from Fraser on user session recording. So good afternoon, uh, thanks for coming to my talk. I'm Fraser, I work at Red Hat on identity management and public key infrastructure related projects. Uh, if you've heard of Free IPA or the Dog Tag CA, that's the stuff I work on. Uh, we're part of a uh, platform engineering security branch, uh, which works on the identity management, crypto libraries and tools, and a whole bunch of other projects, uh, including the one I'm going to tell you about today, which is user session recording. So. Get over your knee-jerk revulsion at the idea of having your sessions being recorded. Uh, understandably, it's probably anathema, uh, anathema to many of us, uh, but there are some important reasons why organisations need to record their users. Principally, there's a regulatory demand uh, in a lot of different industries uh, that uh, customers of Red Hat and other organisations need to comply with. Uh, so if you've heard of um, PCI DSS compliance, other kinds of government uh, compliance programs, these require organisations to, at least on some of their systems, uh, record everything that users are up to. Some organisations want to track what contractors or other visitors are doing on their critical systems. And uh, there's also a uh, kind of disaster recovery or a audit benefit to being able to tell if something bad has happened, uh, who did that, what were they doing at the time, how has this come about, and uh, hopefully um, use that as a source of information or intelligence about events that have happened and potentially how to recover. Then some companies and government organisations really do want to record everything users do within their organisation on their systems, and uh, that's okay. Uh, some, m most companies, and most companies large enough to have risk analysts will know that you, that you probably don't want to do that, but in some cases it is appropriate. So they need to record what the users are doing, uh, store that information, those data somewhere safe, and then when something comes up, lets them know who did that thing, and uh, they can see how they did it. There are a number of proprietary commercial offerings in this space, and these range from application level proxies, so boxes uh, running on dedicated hardware, sitting on the network, uh, listening to traffic, maybe proxying traffic. Uh, and then it goes all the way down to user space processes uh, running on a particular system of interest monitoring what other users and processes on that same system are doing. These solutions can do things from recording keystrokes to recording uh, the display visual, so a video stream of what's happening on the system, uh, an audit trail of commands that were executed, uh, which applications have been run, what URLs people are, are, people are visiting, and so on. And Typically, there's a requirement to integrate these tools with an organisation's identity management system so that they can uh, control who gets recorded on which systems and under what circumstances. Because again, usually the risk analysts will say, you don't want to record everything, but for compliance reasons on these particular systems or systems involved in this particular aspect of your business, uh, you will need to record what happens on them. So you do need to be able to have some control over who gets recorded and under what circumstances. And finally, uh, they need to store all of this information securely, centrally, and have uh, searching and playback capabilities. Oftentimes, customers of, of these uh, commercial and proprietary offerings are not satisfied because they are typically very expensive, often kind of per seat or per or per human in your organisation licences. And if it's proprietary software, you get no introspection into what the thing is actually doing, whether it's doing its job properly. Uh, and if it's not doing precisely what the customer needs, 
usually they're over a barrel. They will not be in a position, uh, either technically or legally, to be able to modify that software to better meet their needs. So of course, in free software, we don't have that problem. Customers want lower costs. They want an open source or free solution, free and freedom, uh, so that they can fix it, or at least understand it better. And uh, of course, commercial support. Um, this is not a sales talk, but that the organization I work for, Red Hat, um, that's basically what we do. Um, so customers have come to us and uh, have asked us to come up with something in this space. So don't we already have this in the open source world? Can't we record sessions already? Uh, and the answer is yes, but no, not really. Uh, so the program script can be used to record a terminal session, but it's something that the user themselves invokes. Uh, it's quite popular, particularly in students uh, who want to record uh, what they've been doing in a terminal session, either for their own benefit or for an assignment submission. It's definitely not a security-oriented tool, and to use it at scale in an organisation for security reasons would require a lot of DIY. Sudo, on the other hand, is a security-oriented uh, security tool, uh, and Sudo has an I.O. logging feature, uh, as well as logging the commands that have been run. The problem here is that it's only going to do that if you're actually running Sudo. Uh, it's not going to record what the user's doing as an unprivileged user in their session when they're not running commands via sudo. The Linux kernel has a TTY audit capability, uh, which um, you can control from AuditD. It is security oriented, uh, and it can be centralized. So you use an existing uh, log dispatcher to get your audit logs off the system into centralized storage, but it only records input. So there's no recording of what actually gets output on a terminal device. So what do we need? For an end-to-end -end session recording solution for the enterprise, uh, we need, first of all, to be able to record terminal I.O. So input, what the user types, and output, what uh, data is actually being sent back to the terminal device. We want prompt, secure, and centralized logging of these data. We want to be able to log uh, kernel audit events too, so you can correlate uh, the user's terminal activity with the events that are actually happening on the system as a result of that terminal activity. So things like which syscalls have been um, executed, which files have been touched, which network devices are being touched, and so on. We need search and playback capability, so we want to be able to quickly find a session and uh, to be able to play that back and, and, as I just mentioned, the correlation with the audit stream. And finally, centralised control over who gets recorded on what systems and when. So we're going to look at each of these aspects in turn. So first, the terminal, uh, terminal I.O. recording. So uh, developers who are working on this project, uh, I'm not one of them, but uh, other people in the platform security uh, team have developed a, a tool called T-Log, uh, which is for terminal logger. So it's a shim that sits between the terminal and the shell, and it is started at login. It can log to flat files, to syslog, or to journal, um, and the data payload format is JSON, so all of the information it records, there's a JSON schema, which you'll see in a moment, um, that the data gets stored in. And uh, the T-Log tool also comes with the playback tool for playing back a session uh, into the terminal. So as well as the basic input and output recording, uh, you can also record uh, window resizes and other terminal events. There's a configurable you are being recorded notice, uh, which is part of the regulatory requirements for some regulations that users actually be notified that they're being recorded. Uh, but it is optional. You can tune for low latency or low overhead. So when T-Log is working, it's going to buffer data, uh, and you can control how much data gets buffered before it turns that into a packet to send on the wire or logs it to uh, syslog or, or to the journal. So if you want low latency, 
then you're going to have more packet overhead, but the packets are going to get off the system faster, uh, versus batching more of the terminal activity into a larger packet and sending them less frequently. There's also rate limiting, so if someone just does cat dev u random to the terminal, um, you can detect a flood condition and shut it down. So the minimal setup uh, is that the login process will be informed that the user's shell is not what the user thinks their shell is, but it's actually tlog rec session. And uh, so tlog will start and reference some other configuration that tells it which shell to actually run and present to the user. It records all the terminal activity, uh, logs it to its uh, log destination, and so in this diagram journal, but potentially a file or syslog. And then at some later point in time, you can use tlog play to read in the, uh, the data that was recorded and uh, observe that user's session. So I think I will demo that right now for you. So here I have uh, two windows open. Uh, on, on a single host. On the uh, right hand side I'm going to run uh, tlog play and read back a session. On the left hand side I'm going to just SSH back into this same machine but as a different user and uh, one whose shell is configured to be uh, tlog rec session. So the session will be recorded. So. No, okay, I can't do that, so I just need to find out what the date is right now. And over here, I shall log in as the sus admin who we want to record. And uh, okay, over here, I can hopefully now start recording this session. I can do a um, long list of the root directory. I can run top. Uh, okay, now it's um, now it's got some data in the journal there that it's able to play back. So in a moment we should see some terminal activity appearing in the right hand pane, uh, which is the replay of the session that I have started on the left side. And there we see, uh, I'm about to run the long list. All the color codes work. Uh, I'm gonna run top in a moment. And there's top. And uh, so, yeah, you get the idea. Um, all of the anti-escape sequences and everything are recorded properly. Um, terminal resize events aren't yet handled in T-log play. So if I were to be running this in two different windows and I resized one window, at the moment, that wouldn't actually be reflected uh, in the tlog play tool, but um, that's on the roadmap. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of the basic capabilities of tlog. Um, so how does it work? Uh, as I mentioned, login uh, will be told by NSS that the user's shell is tlog or tlog rec session. Uh, tlog will then consult uh, a configuration source to find out, hey, I'm going to start a shell for this user, what shell should I start? Uh, on the demo you just saw, that's just flat configuration, so I could, I could actually, uh, is that large enough for folks? I could probably embiggen it now. And to, um, let's see, password. Sus admin. We can see that the user's shell is actually tlog rec session, and then in uh, Etsy, tlog tlog rec session dot conf. Uh, shell. Okay, so I actually haven't overridden the default configuration, but the default uh, on Fedora is that tlog uh, rec session should start bash for the user, but if you wanted your users to have a different shell, then you would change that in that file. Okay, so uh, 
When T-Log finds out what actual shell to start, it uh, forks the pseudo terminal device um, and connects, uh, it, um, it invokes the user's shell, connects that to the master side of the terminal device and reads from the slave side uh, in order to uh, find out what input and output is happening on the, um, so it reads and writes from the slave side and um, records all of that data. Okay. Uh, and then logs that to the log destination. The schema is what you see there. So we record the host, uh, a UID for the session, which is rec, um, the user's name, session ID. Uh, the ID field is the packet sequence number for this particular session. And the timing information records metadata about, um, among other things, terminal resize events and when they occurred. And then we have the in-text, in-bind, and out-text, out-bind uh, fields, which stores the, um, the input, uh, both text and binary, and the, and the text and binary output that occurred on the uh, pseudo-terminal. Okay, so that's part one. Part two was logging infrastructure. So getting the logs off the machine of interest to a centralized storage. So what do we take out of the log storage slash searching slash analyzing zoo. We need something that's open source, scalable, and ideally has an active community. So yes, Elasticsearch and Kibana. So the VAQ project uh, is bringing this to the Red Hat portfolio. Um, so we're gonna normalize the logs, put them in Elasticsearch, um, and use Kibana for the dashboards and the analytics. And uh, okay, there's, there's nothing particularly new about that, but uh, one of the main goals of the VAQ project is A, um, get this um, into the Red Hat portfolio, but also integration with OpenShift and OpenStack and other projects so that you can very easily use your, cent use your centralized logging um, solution with those other projects. So you can use any popular logging service to get your logs off your machine into Elasticsearch, FluentD, RSYslog, Logstash. Um, I think not all of those are free software. Um, and VAQ, which is coming. For logging audit events, uh, the information that you get out of the kernel audit uh, subsystem is often in a very uh, ad hoc format. So the or shape tool takes those uh, kernel messages and turns them, or massages them to conform to a uh, defined schema for actually uh, storing these events and making them easy to put into a system like Elasticsearch and do searching, correlation analysis, and so on. So it listens for audit events on uh, the terminal, uh, the, sorry, the kernel, uh, there's a special socket device um, that it can listen to to receive these events, uh, converts them into JSON or XML and logs them to syslog. Uh, so, yep, the uh, kernel sends the messages to audit D, audit D passes them to or disp D, uh, or disp D distributes them to plugins, including or shape, or shape formats the JSON and logs it. Um, and that from there, whatever your log dispatching tool that you're using will pick it up and ship it off. Um, and that's just an example of a particular event, so an exec VE event, so some program being run. Um, and it's um, the left and the right side is it's basically the same event, but one is the JSON schema, one is XML. For session playback and analysis, um, we currently have a proof of concept uh, for integration into the cockpit web UI. So it's going to provide the session playback. Um, you can see the input output and eventually ordered events, but we haven't done that integration yet. Uh, so we haven't yet designed the correlation. Searching for uh, input, output, and commands and files. And uh, the reason we choose Cockpit is because it provides a nice environment for distributing this proof of concept, getting feedback on it, and we didn't have to build it from the ground up. It was less work to um, use the Cockpit infrastructure and just provide this one component. So if I give you a quick demo of uh, the Cockpit tool, I'll visit 
port 9090, never mind the certificate warnings, says the PKI developer. Uh, right, and I'll uh, here. Okay, and here on the left we have session recording. This isn't released in cockpit, by the way, but um, it is, I believe, planned to be released in an upcoming release. So I'll just play back this session. Uh, we can fast forward, pause, um, slow things down. So the SUS admin here has used Telnet to, uh, well, wait for it. Yeah, to look at a yarn cap. Go faster. Oh, that's the end of the session. Okay. So again, uh, just as with T-Log uh, Play, it's understanding all of the ANSI color codes. Um, I think the resizing is handled in this tool, but don't quote me on that. Okay. Uh, whoops, now I need to find my slides. Okay, good. Uh, so uh, I'll just skip through how that works. For centralized control, um, naturally, we're going to integrate it with FreeIPA and SSSD. So in the SSSD case, um, SSSD is going to find a match for the user in its configuration. It's going to t um, there's going to be an, a way to tell SSSD that a user should or should not be recorded. Um, if it's to be recorded, SSSD will tell login that, this, that the shell is tlog rec session and then um, put an environment variable in the user's session that will tell tlog rec session what shell to actually start for the user. So you're no longer going to have a static shell configuration. It is actually going to respect the user's shell settings. Uh, for free IPA, we're going to have configurations uh, that look something like host base access control rules or will be attached to host base access control rules. Essentially, uh, potentially as simple as a Boolean that just says for this HBAC rule, do or do not record sessions. So uh, wrapping up, the approach here is uh, basically T-log for recording the user's session, existing log dispatching tools for getting the logs off that system into Elasticsearch, and, and then having Kibana for uh, searching and analytics, and for centralized control using free IPA and SSSD to configure a system to know when to record sessions or not. There are some challenges, how not to record passwords. Um, there isn't really a good way, just don't record input, but we do have some crazy ideas about how it might be done. That's definitely um, not an immediate priority because of the complexity of doing that properly. Seeking, rewinding and resizing. Um, seek and rewind at the moment, if you want to rewind or seek, we just go back to the beginning of the session and replay all of the events into a reset terminal. Uh, but eventually we'll look at generating keyframes and inserting them into the, uh, into the uh, data that gets recorded. Audit log correlation, um, we haven't done any of the design, the UX around how that's actually going to work. If you have ideas, we'd love to hear them. Um, and of course, ensuring the security of the tool in terms of preventing privilege escalation, because it does run set UID, um, and uh, making it difficult for users to circumvent the session recording. Um, very quickly, it is not a command whitelisting or blacklisting tool. Don't ever think that um, you could attempt to use it as such. We're totally not worrying about recording graphical sessions. That's totally out of scope. And of course, it's not a one-stop shop for security, right? It's a source of intelligence uh, about what users are doing on your systems and potentially a useful, uh, a source of useful data that you can monitor for anomalies. But it is not a uh, holistic security tool. It's one tool in your toolbox. So you can try it. Uh, all the code's up on GitHub for T-Log or Shape. Uh, we have a fork of Cockpit with the, um, with the session recording um, feature that I demoed a moment ago. And uh, VAQ has its own GitHub organization as well. And that's the end. Thank you for listening. <laughs>